Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I want to show you something amazing I found inside of Affinity Photo that will give you much better results for HDR editing but also for other photos, a feature I always wanted and it's hidden inside of actually tonal mapping. So let's check that out. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, my new online course is coming soon where I show you how I did this amazing composite from start to finish with all the steps so you can do it in a similar way for your own portrait photos. So let's get started here and of course in Affinity Photo we have a specialized HDR process to develop these pictures. So you go up here to file and then you see here HDR merge over here. You click on that and then you have to select the images you have created before that. So in your camera for an HDR photo, what you want to do is called bracketing. This is something that your camera can do automatically when you go into that program where it will take a series of three photos or five photos that are a little bit darker from the exposure and a little bit brighter from the exposure and then a normal exposure in the middle. And HDR is basically compressing all that together to one picture so that you can have all the areas where the shadows are not underexposed and the highlights are not overexposed. This is where the name comes from, HDR, high dynamic range. All right, so let's get here on add and then you look for the pictures you want to have here and select them and click on open. I have already done that, so I'm not gonna do that right now. And here you can also select automatically align images. That's a good idea if you do these images freehand. Then also automatic removal of ghosts. That's often a good idea. So ghosting can happen when things move in your pictures, like leaves moving in the wind or people moving through your image the software will try to remove these ghosts to have a clear, nice image. You can also have noise reduction. It doesn't show your preview, sadly, so you have to experiment with that a little bit. And if you know that you have not too much noise in your image because of the way that you photograph that in your camera, you can also turn that off. And then it says tone mapping HDR image. So you can turn this off or you can turn it on. And I found the only difference that this makes is that when you turn it on, it automatically is loaded into the tone mapping persona for you. Otherwise you have to click on that on your own. So when you do that, you end up with a picture like this. It's not the amazing thing that you had hoped for. And then on the left side here, we have some presets. There's also other things here, extreme and crazy and James Ritson has created his own versions here. So I'm sure for some pictures, this is going to work very nicely. Here you have neutral. And when you think neutral, you would think, well, this is gonna show me something that is not adjusted, but then this is neutral and this is already not great. It doesn't look good. Here is the reason why. This is the specific thing that really makes this happen. Over here in this tone mapping tab, you have that first part where it says tone compression and local contrast. And these two sliders are amazingly important. Tone compression is how much of that is actually influenced by the HDR algorithm, basically, you could say. So when you turn this down, you have a dark image that looks more natural from how you actually photograph that minus the parts that are brighter from the higher exposures, right? So when you turn this up, you can come to a degree where it actually looks nice and you feel good with the image. So that is the idea here. This is the really good thing about that. You can start by zero and then slowly move up, look with your eyes and see if you like it or not and come to something that feels good to you. And by that, you can easily get a good result that also looks natural as an HDR picture. Now, what local contrast is doing, and that is really interesting, is that it is a form of contrast that is happening in the smaller areas 
off the picture. It's similar to what, for example, texture does in Lightroom or what a micro contrast is doing in Photolab. So when you push this up, you can see that you get a contrast in the smaller detail. So when you look here, for example, at that brick wall, you can see that this is getting more contrast, but not the picture itself, but the details in the pictures. You can add a lot of nice details here. Now, my advice would be to not overdo that because then you get that kind of super realistic, extreme HDR look that is just too much. So try to tone it down a little bit. It completely is dependent on your taste, what you want to do with that. But like, get it to a point where you see the details. It feels good enough. It gives you what you want to have and then stop it there. Another thing you want to look out for is, are there any halos around these edges for both sliders? So that does not happen because that can happen. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see. So really look for them at the edges specifically of buildings or any other kind of edges that there is not a glowing darker or brighter halo around the edge of that object. So really important. Then of course you could do some more adjustments down here. It's just basic adjustments, exposure, black point, brightness, contrast, saturation, all these kind of things. But you can also do that in the photo persona if you want to. So for example, here, what we can see is that we have an image that is in the sun on the top and then in the shadow on the lower part, which means, of course, in this case, because this is an early morning picture, that the upper parts of the building are warmer and the lower parts of the building are cooler. And there's actually a very simple fix for that. So let's go here and apply. So we can go over to our photo persona. It's applying the tone map. You can see now I only have one layer. So this is now rendered all together. You cannot go back from that. This is basically a destructive method. Now what you're doing is that you will create down here adjustments, white balance. And you can see here, I can warm up the picture. I can cool down the picture. So of course, what I want you to do is to only warm it up here in the lower parts. So I will adjust it a little bit. So it is too similar to what I've seen up here. And then the next step is that I go here to layer and invert. So it's not applied to anything. And now what I want to do is to use a brush that is big and it is soft from the hardness. And then you go to white and you can see already in the preview that this will then apply our warm adjustments. You can see when I paint this on here, I will only have that in the lower part of my image where I paint that on. And this is why we want to have it soft. So we don't see any edges in between these two areas where it is applied and where it is not applied. And then when you have done that, you can still play around here with your slider to adjust it in a way that feels nice. And in that occasion here with this picture, I feel like I can get it close so they look similar, but I still feel like the upper part here has too much of that warmth, right? So I will push it a little bit high down here so it's similar to the top part. And then I'm going to create a second white balance adjustment. Now this second one doesn't have a mask on it. it, is applied to all of the picture. And here I will cool down all of the picture again. And you can see that when I do that, all of the building is coming to a more natural stage with these two adjustments on them. And so that looks a lot nicer than before. Let's turn this on and off again. So you can see this is before, this is after. So it feels a lot closer together. And of course, this is non-destructive. So if you still want to adjust something here, you can still go in here, move the sliders around until you're happy and do all of the other settings and adjustments that you're used to. And you can see in my other tutorials. Now, here's another thing. This is the feature I always wanted to have in Affinity Photo. Let's go here to another picture. This is not HDR pictures, just a normal photo, which I have done with my GoPro 10. And now 
we go over to our tone mapping persona. It's rendering the tone mapping on that, like giving you a preview, and it looks really bad when it comes out. And again, the reason for that is found up here, where for some reason the tone compression is set to 100%, which is not a great idea. It should be at zero, because you see, when I put it at zero, I have my original picture again. This is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. So this should actually be what is saved under neutral, not the 100% tone compression. And here comes the magic part. Local contrast, which again is similar to texture in Lightroom or to micro contrast in Photolab, can be applied here. You can see, so when I turn this up, look down here. Let's zoom in here on these areas a little bit more. And you can see here, that I get some nice contrast in these areas without anything else changing in the image, which means we have local contrast. This is different again from normal contrast. Normal contrast is adjusting the bigger contrast in the image. Local contrast is looking for the smaller differences between the areas in the image. Look at the face, for example, and see that this will bring out the details of that surface of that corrosion and give you much more of a texture of a substance of a good feeling to the image so that's really beautiful again this is a destructive method so when i click on apply this is rendered as you can see into one pixel layer again there is no adjustment layer we can go back to so this is like one of the filters up here a destructive method that's it for today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it because this helps my channel so much. And if you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified about my other uploads. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.